Are you not sure which Pokemon to use for the Cinderace raid coming up this weekend? Well, allow me to lend you a helping hand. Hey guys, so today I have six Pokemon for you that will be absolutely amazing in the Cinderace raids. For those that don't know, the Cinderace raid will be starting on the 30th of December, but don't worry, if you can't make it because of the new year, it will return in two weeks time. This will be a seven star raid just like Charizard, so make sure you have your Pokemon at level 100 and trained and ready. Now it is worth noting that even though Cinderace is a native fire type, it's going to be a tear up fighting type for this raid, so make sure you take that into account. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like and drop a comment letting me know. Let's get right into this. The first Pokemon is actually the one we caught in the last 7 star raid and that is Charizard, but we're running a pretty spicy set on this thing. So Charizard gets access to the move Belly Drum, which will max out your attack stat, and even though we only have an attack of 84, that's still a lot when it's at plus 6. We're also running Acrobatics. Charizard being a flying type gets access to Stab Acrobatics, which is a move that doubles in base power if you're not holding an item. But we are holding an item, though the beauty is the Citrus Berry will activate the second we use Belly Drum, meaning that we will be itemless with some health recovered and a really strong acrobatics with a plus 6 attack. Of course, we're going Terra Flying to boost that up, and we're running Blaze because we'll get nothing out of Solar Power, and just in case the sun is set for some reason, we don't want to be losing any health. Now, the other moves I've opted to run here are Brick Break and Helping Hand. Now, these are kind of up to you. Helping Hand could definitely be exchanged for something like Rest because Charizard doesn't have reliable recovery. But Brick Brick is here for a specific reason. Cinderace gets access to a signature move known as Court Change. If someone on your team is to set a Reflect, Court Change will change that to the other side of the field, meaning it becomes a Reflect for Cinderace. In the odd chance that that happens, it's good to have something like Brick Break to be able to get rid of that screen and allow you to keep doing consistent and strong damage. For Charizard, we're going to be maximizing health and attack when it comes to the EVs and just throwing the extra 4 into defense just to get that little bit more bulk. Now this is something really, really important. You need your health to be at an even number. So if you were to move your health to 359 and put that one less point into it, your Citrus Berry actually won't activate when you use Belly Drum because you won't be at exactly half HP. So having max health here is really, really important. We're also gonna be running an Adamant Nature to boost the power of that attack. Now onto the next Pokemon. I think this is probably gonna be the best one for the raid. It's the one I'm gonna rely on the most and it is Seraledge. Now Seraledge being a fire and ghost type with flash fire is pretty amazing. Cinderace will have stab fire move Moves, even though it's a fighting type and it will have stab fighting moves because of the terror. Though none of those can actually touch Seraledge because Flash Fire makes you completely immune to the fire moves and Ghost makes you immune to the fighting moves. We're gonna be running Bulk Up and Bitter Blade. Now Psycho Cut is here because I wanted to talk about this with you guys. A lot of people are thinking Psycho Cut is gonna be the best way to hit the Cinderace because it's super effective damage. But I'm gonna talk to you guys about Stab and how it works right now. So yes, Psycho Cut will double in power because Cinderace is weak to it being a fighting type. Now that is a 140 base power. Bitter Blade is 90 base power at base, and with Stab, that shoots up all the way to 135 base power. It's only 5 away. And then if we take Flash Fire into account, we'll get a 1.5 times damage boost if we're hit by any of Cinderace's fire moves, which is really, really likely to happen. That means that Bitter Blade will be sitting at over 200 base power making it the no-brainer choice because it also recovers 50% of the damage that you deal. Having that kind of recovery while using something like Bulk Up to boost both our attack and our defense will make this raid so incredibly easy for Sarah Ledge. I've thrown on a charcoal here because why not just boost the power of that fire damage even more? Now Taunt is here in case the enemy Cinderace also has Bulk Up. It does learn this move. This may be over-preparing. I don't know if it will have it, but it's nice to have a way to shut it down if it does. As I mentioned, Psycho Cut's really not going to be that great here, so you can honestly run something like Brick Break to break screens as well if it does core change. We're we'll running exactly the same EV spread that we run on the Charizard here, just max attack, max HP with the Adamant Nature. And Terra Fire just to boost that damage even further. Next up is one of the strongest Pokemon for essentially all of the raids, and that is Annihilate. Now, Annihilate has access to Bulk Up and Rage Fist, which is unbelievably powerful, and it also gets Stab at Drain Punch to get some recovery. Not to mention access to Screech to lower the defense of the Cinderace for you and your allies. If you use these moves in the right order throughout the raid, you could possibly even one-shot the Cinderace before it even gets its shield up. Now we're running the Covet Cloak because we don't want to be flinched by things like Send Headbutt if Cinderace is to run it, we don't want to be burned by Pyroball, that's for sure, and we just don't have to worry about any of those things. Now when it comes to the ability, it's kind of up to you, Defiant is probably the best bet in case it learns some kind of move that can lower your stats. Vital Spirit feels pretty pointless, Cinderace probably won't have any sleeping moves, and Inner Focus is again not necessary 
necessary because you won't be flinching due to covered cloak. We're running Terror Ghost because we want to shed those fighting weaknesses. We don't want to get hit by acrobatics and Zen Headbutt super effectively once we get a chance to terrestrialize. So the key to this will be bulking up, healing up with Drain Punch, and using Rage Fist when you've taken enough hits to just wipe up that Cinderace after, of course, you've already hit it with some Screeches. Next, we'll talk about everyone's favorite raid Pokemon, and that is Azumarill. Now, yes, Play Rough is bugged, but this actually has a little way around that. When it comes to Azu, the item choice is up to you. You can run Ability Shield so you don't lose huge power, or you can run the Shell Bell to get more recovery out of hitting the Pokemon, because you don't really have much recovery on Azumarill, but that's why we're running Aqua Ring. Aqua Ring heals you for 1 16th of your health every single turn. This definitely adds up throughout the raid. Now we of course have the Belly Drum to max out our attack once again, and then we have Play Rough. But I did mention that Play Rough is bugged, so how do we get around that? Well, once you use a few Play Roughs, you'll be able to go Terra Fairy, meaning you'll have access to Terra Blast. And this move isn't bugged at all, so you will do big damage if you Terra and use Terra Blast at that plus 6. Again, we're running the same stat spread, because in raids you just want to max maximize your bulk and your offenses. Now yes, you'd get more out of these builds if you were to maximize defense as we're going up against a physical attacker, but you don't want your raid Pokemon to be a one trick, you definitely want to bring this to other raids as well. Next up we have the wonderful Grimmsnarl. Now the beauty about Grimmsnarl in this raid is it won't only be that support Pokemon it's always been, it's also going to be an offensive threat against the fighting type Cinderace. The reason for that is that Grimmsnarl also gets access to bulk up. You'll be boosting your attack and your defense every single turn, you also have access to Spirit Break, which is a not bugged fairy move, which is amazing. You'll be hitting Cinderace really hard, you'll also have access to Prankster Taunt, stopping Cinderace from being able to use Bulk Up if it does have it, and then Reflect as well to help your allies take hits a little better. We'll be running Terra Fairy to lose that Dark type, so fighting moves don't hit us even neutral. They'll be resisted, and we'll be able to take them really well. Of course, with the ability we do want Prankster, there's no reason to run Frisk or Pickpocket in a raid, unless you're going up against a Dark type Pokemon. We'll be running the Covert Cloak because we don't want to be getting burned by those Pyro Balls. Now, again, if you don't want to run something like Taunt or Reflect, you can run something like Drain Punch. This will give you recovery on Grimmsnarl, because this Pokemon doesn't have any recovery outside of it, and again, we're running the exact same spread as the other ones. So let's get into the last Pokemon on this list, but by no means the last good Pokemon. There are so many, I just couldn't mention them all, and that is Pelipper. Pelipper's actually surprisingly really good in this raid. Not only is it a flying water type naturally resisting both fighting and fire, but it brings the rain to help Pyroball do less damage to the rest of your team. And that's thanks to Drizzle. Drizzle is an ability that will bring the rain when it enters the battle, and we're going to run the Damp Rock to extend that to 8 turns instead of 5. Now the rain also does something else, and that is make Hurricane hit 100% of the time. This is a really strong flying move, and it's going to do a lot of damage to the Cinderace. Now because that's the main attacking move we're going to use, you could throw something like Air Slash on there to make it a little more accurate if you're worried about the rain going away. But what I think would be really cool is running something like Stockpile and Roost. Stockpile is a move you can use 3 times that will raise both your special defense and defense. The special defense isn't too important, but getting that defense to plus 3 and having access to Roost to recover will make you really hard for the Cinderace to deal with while firing off those really strong Hurricanes. Not to mention you have Helping Hand here to help your allies get those big hits if necessary. Now with Pelipa, the EV spread is going to be similar to the others, though this time it's max HP and max special attack with a modest nature. There are so many more Pokemon that are going to be amazing for the Cinderace raid, but I assure you, if you get one of these ready, you'll likely take it down with no problem. The one I'm going to be going for mainly is going to be Seraledge, and I'll be trying the Charizard out too because it just sounds really fun. Let me know what you're going to be trying out for the Cinderace raid in the comments below, and as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.